everybody, my name is Harry Jacobs and welcome. I am the North of 60 Gamer and it's really great to have you here today. Today we're going to do an unboxing. We're going to unbox Uprising Curse of the Last Emperor. This is an area control game of some respects. There's a few other mechanics in there. We're going to get to the gameplay eventually, but right now we're going to just concentrate on unboxing. There's a lot to unbox here. There is the base game, there's the expansion, we've got a dice pack, and we even got a small little other pack. So let's get quickly down to the table so we don't spend a lot of time unboxing this. And I'm going to keep this uh, as a separate video. Normally I would just put it in there, but I think the depending on how much is in the box, we may just explore the box a little bit and then talk about the box and the game components really, really quickly. So let's get down to the table. So here's the box. Uh, this is the core box that we're looking at, Uprising Curse of the Last Emperor. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to retail, but one of the things that I will say about the box, if you went into a retail store, other than this picture, you're really not going to get a lot out of that. There's absolutely nothing on the sides, and you can see a little reflection. Sorry about that. It doesn't shrink right now. And you can see the back. There is nothing in the box that describes this game. It is from Nemesis Games. It says 14 and up. Doesn't give you an idea of player count, though I believe it's one to four. And there's no information of this game at all. So if it's going to retail, that's going to be a problem because you're going to have to do some research if you walk into the store and you don't have your phone, which most people do. You would never know anything about this game. It is kind of an explore, uh, 4X area control type game from what I've seen in the videos. I was very interested in backing it because of some of the components. And you can see that if we look at the, uh, we'll just put that, uh, move that a little bit to the side, but it's the exact same thing on the expansion. There's absolutely nothing here that tells you about what this expansion adds to this game. Now, the reviews have been good. Everybody seems to be enjoying the play of this game. But that is just a criticism on my part that we have some wasted space here that doesn't help us really determine what this game does and how this game plays and what kind of mechanics are out there and even what's in the box. But for now, uh, let's uh, get to it and let's go into the box and see what the heck's in there. So the first challenge is always for Harry is to get into the box. And these, this is a big box. I mean, this is huge. And, and so I'm trying to keep the camera a little bit lower down so, you know, there's a little more detail showing here. But, oh, as you know, you've seen my unboxings before. I often wrestle with the boxes. I'm just going to stick that in my pocket down here. Oh, switch to the other side. Oh, I would throw it on the floor, but my wife gets annoyed about that kind of stuff. Okay. Let's... That's, uh, oh, we got a vacuum seal going on here. Oh, again, Harry struggles with the box. Who is going to win? Will it be the box or Harry? Stay tuned, folks. We're going to see if we can open this box. Oh, well, we're still trying to open the box. It, the, the lid is rising and the lid is off. Oh, we have a safety warning. Oh, what does it say? This game contains small parts. Okay, we have, of course, at the top, normally we'd see the rules, but we, we have the uh, cutouts. That's interesting. So, uh, oh, whoa, there, there's <laughs> a few of them. What do we got here? One, looks like about six or seven of these uh, cutouts. We'll, go, we'll explore them later when I organize the game. Whoops, well, there goes one of the cutouts right now. We have reference sheets, combat sequence, combat round. There's a couple of them. I think it's two to four player, but there's only two of these. So I guess you'll be passing them around. We got passing and activation. We have placing and combat sequence and combat round. Look, nice little arrows. Kind of neat. You can go here and there and combat round, combat sequence. Before rolling, rolling, that's kind of neat. It takes you right through. Uh, that'll help you if you don't uh, like to go into the rules so much. There we go. A nice. Now we know why 
the uh, cardboard was on top because we have a nice little inlay for our rules right here. Uh, there is the rule book. Spiral Brown. Oh, look at the art. Very nice. Introduction on the objective. Does it set up the narrative? Is it one to four players? Azul, they take the leadership of a formerly enslaved faction. We'd be aware of beyond the frozen seas lurks greater danger. So we're setting up the narrative of the game, which is nice. We have all these components just off of the side. There's the setup of the game. Wow, we're going to be exploring this one for a while. There's a couple of uh, layouts based on the number of factions that you're playing. I don't know if this game is cooperative or... And we have difficulty settings. We'll explore that a little bit as we go with the game concepts. So there's... Uh, it looks like it's pretty cool. Okay, now we have uh, another set of components or cardboard cutouts. And then we have, it looks like we have four player boards. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four player boards. And we have... Oh, we have the... Druin. And let's see what else we have here. We have the Moyer or Mohar Yar. I believe it gives you a little bit of backstory, collective. It's a survival. 200,000 survived. He's a chieftain, the Crow, the Forgotten Guardians. There's only 30,000 of those survived. And then the Duer Kahar, 80,000 survivors, they're clans. Aha, look at this. There we go. Uh, wow, there is a ton of things in here. So these look like the player type. Uh, if this is players, uh, the other player, <laughs> geez. Uh, the here we are. The, the, these are the the player uh, containers. Now, one of the things that really attracted me to this game was, if I get this open, was the fact that we have these acrylic standees as opposed to minis or cardboard. And, and this was one of the big big attractions to this game. And if I can get this open, maybe we can. Maybe we can't. <laughs> Boy, the challenge is in the morning. Uh, the dogs are quiet. There we are. Very nice. Good quality. There we are. That is absolutely wonderful. So we'll explore more of these as we play, but wow. So, and there's four different factions, as you can see. So, we have four different uh, colors. And each one looks like they have possibly some... Oh, yeah. They each have unique artwork, which is neat. And we have our resource boxes. Um, we've got some dice down here. We've got some tarot cards. We've got some tiny, tiny cards that go with these armory cards. Oh, there are dice go in here, which is good. And we've got dice down there. Oh, it tells you kind of which is what here. Elephants. I don't know what all these are. Cubes. We'll explore these a bit more as we go along here. But that is really kind of cool. So I got some work cut out for me to figure out what the heck we're doing here and the parts that need to go together. Now I know there's fortresses and oh there oh wow there's more. Oh we this is a lot in this box. Is this to go all the way to the bottom? Or is that it? Oh my gosh. There is a lot in this box that needs to be explored. Holy Moses, I didn't even think there was another one. So there's tons and tons of things in this box. And we're going to have to, I ha, I'm going to have to figure out how it all goes together again. And then, and then, uh, um, no, these are like jigsaw puzzles. You know, the first thing in the morning, and you know, you're trying to figure out, okay, how did this go together? So that we can put it back in the box. So let's go. Uh, that goes here. That's good. And we're going to have to organize that. And of course, I'll show you that once it's all sort of organized. Um, right now, we'll just leave that and we'll push the box off to the side a little bit. I'm really curious to see what's in the Uprising Arch Nemesis box. So just give me a minute. I'm going to push this off to the side 
and we'll take a look at the uh, other box. I did get another set of dice, so we don't need to open that up. We'll just look what's in the Uprising box. So here it is. We've just pushed Uprising a little bit out of the way, and let's take a look at what's in this box here. Okay, again, boy, this is double, double the challenge this morning with the shrink wrap. This box is still quite heavy, so there is feels like there's a fair bit in this box as well. I, I'm looking forward to learning how to play this game. Uh, and I, I think I bought it mainly because of the the acrylics. But I, I mean, the, the game I did play on Tabletopia or, or Tabletop Simulator, and I did quite like it. Very, very easy to play, really. Um, it looks like there's a ton of rules. Again, we have a safety warning. We have small parts, folks. If you have children, don't let them play with your game. Um, looks like we've got a, a, some new uh, spots to explore. I'm not sure what these are. Uh, might have to do with the expansion, more about the expansion. We had never, another huge spiral bound uh, book. Very, very good quality. I, I mean, yeah. We have, looks like three new factions. We have the Hukan, the contested noble houses, 13,000 survivors. We have the Renegade Legion, 8,000. They're warlocks. Oh, there's four of them. So we have, basically what we've done is we've added four new, uh, looks like factions. Looks like we've got some hero cards. Wow, there is a ton in this box oh wow this is impressive i don't remember what 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 the, the pricing was on this when, when i when i bought it but i can tell you i am i'm freaking impressed with the the quality of the components that that are within the boxes at the moment including the, the um containers uh, the storage solutions now i appreciate quality of life a lot I don't think this game was particularly expensive compared to other games in terms of what is in the box. And if, if you're looking for a quality comparison, I would almost have to say we could look at Dwellings of Eldervale uh, for a quality of life game. This is absolutely amazing, absolutely wonderful. I really can't wait to dig into this and get this organized and come back and show you that organization. So we're going to do that. And we're gonna, and then at that point, we're going to end the video and then we're going to get into the setup and the rules. So this will probably be a multi-part setup. We'll pick a couple of uh, factions and I don't know what factions. There's just so many to explore. That makes this game, even for a solo player, very, very repeatable. So anyway, uh, let's... Uh, Get this game organized and get back to you on it. So just before I'm diving into uh, organizers, I'm, I'm flipping through the rules. And I thought I'd just stop here and say, these rules are amazing. Now, one thing I didn't show you was the player board. And we will show that in the components uh, once we get there. But these rules are incredibly laid out. The colors are wonderful. Uh, I can read the fonts. The uh, now this might be a bit difficult over here for people who might be colorblind uh, looking at these cubes, but uh, that could be a problem. But it's well laid out, the colors are vibrant, plenty of examples. And if you go to the back, look at this the examples of how to play are amazing. So we've got explore examples, the command examples, the action phases. Everything is well, well laid out here. Um, I think they've done a great job on the rules. Now, I, I, there are a lot of rules, but if you look at the video plays that are out there right now, it, it doesn't seem like an overly complicated game. I think it's just once you open the box and go, oh my God, what the hell am I in for, is where you get that surprise. Um, again, uh, there's not a lot really explaining the game until you get, open the rules. So... I suspect if you're going to want to buy this game, you're probably going to want to look up the uh, if there's a PDF version of the rules, because there's nothing on the box of box to continue to even indicate the amazing amount of stuff that's in this box. I'm going to look on uh, the kicks the original Kickstarter to see if there's a retail version. The retail version may be 
just cardboard counters and whatnot. But I don't know if this game is coming to retail. And I can tell you that right now we probably have a $150 game if it does come to retail. And I think that's probably how much I paid. But I'm not 100% sure. But we'll figure it out together. Ooh, that just sounds creepy. So as I start to decompose uh, what's in the box, first of all, here are some of the game boards, and this is huge, and I, I don't know whether or not actually I'm going to be able to <laughs> bring this to the table to show you. Um, these are modules, so there's, like, there's three boards. So here is one of the boards. Uh, this is Imperial Graveyard and the Chaos Graveyard. We have Legion decks and Horde decks. No clue. We'll figure that one out. Um, the game is played over chapters. As you can see, chapter three, chapter four, there's rooms for all the cards, well organized when you get it to the table. Now, I don't know how long this game takes to set up at this point, but uh, I have a feeling that we might be tight for space on my table to play. And then here we are, a, whoops, a, here is the, the game board itself, and I'm not going to unfold it all the way, but you are going to randomly place tiles around there and they're going to be able to get uh, and they'll do various things and give you various resources looks like we have a score tracker i think we have the terrain type so everything pretty much is on these boards uh, to give you that sense of how to play and then of course we're, we're we're getting into our cardboard counters and we're certainly going to um, put these in the box and i'm going to start setting them up um, almost immediately so i just want to show you these parts these are amazing uh, these are the havens that uh, you put on the board. They're kind of like fortresses, and each faction has five of them. I just wanted to show you the, the quality of these as I get ready, and I'm going to put these in the box. And I'm just going to put them in the box with their components. I'm not going to unbag everything at the moment for the specific factions, but I am going to organize it. So just checking in, uh, you can see that we're starting to build out. The counters come out very, very easy. You can see the hexes are going in this spot here, which is obviously for hexes because you can see the shape. And it does say so on the actual lid. So the lids kind of give you a hint of where everything goes at the moment. But this is where we're at. We're slowly making our way through this. So we are progressing. Uh, I've been using the rule book to try to figure out what various parts are. Um, there doesn't seem to be spots for a few things. No, I do have uh, some of these bead type uh, boxes that I got off Amazon. It cost me, I think, $23 for a 32 a set that comes with uh, all kinds of four different sizes. So they're nested inside. These are the uh, sort of the, this isn't the large one. This is, there is a larger one and they're nested inside each other. So there's four in a pack and I think there's, eight packs so there's like 32 different boxes in the uh, in the set so these are very very handy because these are event marker clips and these are clips and i'm not really quite sure i don't like clips generally here are this is the first player marker right here these track uh i think the curses uh this i haven't figured out what this is yet uh, i will hopefully these are uh, turn markers, I guess, for you can figure out, you put them with their standees uh, in terms of the, uh, I think, the curses or the skeletons, and then you turn them over and make sure that you know what you've activated. The dice are all here in, in there. Uh, you can see just off to the side, we've got some cubes, we've got our hexes, we've got our small cards, we've got our large cards. These look like... Um, might be tiny epic size so 188 by 25 125 something like that or i, I think they're big, they are certainly bigger than tarot tarot cards um there's our extra dice set i, I don't know where that's going to go at this point um so that's pretty much everything sorted out at the moment so uh, these are our fortresses and our towers and walls we have our various standees for um, the skeletons, the curses, the garrison forces, things like that. Okay, that just goes right like that. And that's going to go... Oh, okay, so it doesn't quite fit. doesn't like what I did here in terms of the uh, fortresses here. I kind of thought that was going to be a problem here. Uh, so it doesn't like what I did here, but it doesn't quite fit. So obviously... Um, 
it's not a hundred or oh, maybe because I probably have it backwards. There we go. There we go. So if you put it on right, it fits just fine. It goes down the side right here. Now I haven't sleeved the cards. I am a compulsive sleever, uh, so I will be sleeving the cards uh, eventually. Uh, so right now, I don't know what we're going to do, whether these are going to fit at the top of the box or not. They may because I've taken out those cardboards. Uh, these are going to get sleeved, so these are going to take up all that space there. Though there is enough space here for the sleeved cards, which is good. Now, I'm not a big fan of what I just see here with the dice on top like that because, oh, that, there we are. But we're going to just put them right on top. There's our two resource containers. So far, so good. And then we have our player boards right now. As we put these together. Now, I don't know how that's going to fit. Now, I, uh, that's not as bad as I thought it would be, actually. Okay, so um, not, not as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, now, I'm going to come down here, and we're going to put our... Put this correctly. Now that's extended here, I'm not quite sure. I think the design is to support these types of things, like right there, that goes like that. The rules are over here, along with our uh, reference cards. Okay, there they are, there, there they are. That just fits in there, it fits in the box, and of course, this is, I thought, we have extra stuff that, that doesn't really fit in the box. <sighs> so, I'm going to have to figure that one out about where they are actually going to go in here. Um, that's a little bit on the not-so-nice side in terms of I was really hoping that there would be some space at the top for that. But I've, unfortunately, because of the boxes and stuff, it does not look like there is. So I'm not sure what we're going to do with those at the moment. So that's kind of disappointing that not everything goes in the box. There's no spaces really set up for these that I could see. And thus I'm willing to put them loose running in there, and I'm not willing to do that. We'll, we'll figure that out eventually. But... So there's a criticism here. That doesn't uh, all fit in the box. Of course, we have our our junk here. <laughs> and I'll throw that out. There's your uprising box. Now, this is not going to go in there. So this makes this game super big, um, which is maybe not as good. And then we have more, even more uh, tokens omen phases and so another set of rules so you're going to have to have a separate box now these will fit these will fit for sure these three i don't know about the two sets of whatever these are used for so that'll that'll be a little bit more interesting to see but this makes this a very very big game to get to the table or uh, bring around to um, your game nights. I'm just going to come down here, go pick up the box. Though it's not terrible. Though it isn't terrible. I mean, uh, that's not bad. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not bad at all. So, other than a couple criticisms about the box itself, which is basically there's nothing on the sides of the box to really denote what the hell this game is all about. Uh, there is not enough room for everything. Uh, there is enough room for everything except for those few components that I put in those boxes because there was nowhere else to put them in there. Uh, maybe I will be able to do that once I put the cards in and figure out you know, if there's some empty spaces down below. Nothing uh, in terms of the... Uh, Uprising, the Arch Nemesis expansion, the same kind of deal. What the heck is it? What does it bring to the table? Um, and it doesn't fit into the main box. 
which is to me um, just makes this game bigger to take to um, to a game night. But that is it. That is everything that is in the Uprising, the Arch Nemesis expansion. I hope you found that helpful uh, as we went along and sort of build it together. So if you like what you see, please uh, hit the like button, subscribe, show you a little appreciation for the time I took to do this for you this morning and for me because I've got to organize it. Uh, hit notifications if you want to hear more about this stuff. And at the end of the day, have a great day. My name is Harry Jacobs. I am the North of 60 Gamer, and this is the North of 60 Gaming Channel. Uh, if you have any comments, put it down below. If you want to catch hold of me, look for me on Board Game Revolution, Board Games for One, Solo Board Gamers, the Board Game Group, and every board game. Those are the five main boards that I have. Other than that, have a great day, folks, and we'll see you next time on the table.